Generally, in the Middle Ages, in most societies, women did not have property rights, let alone take executive decisions in business. But there is an exception. Arabia, in the time already before Mohammed, during his lifetime, and later. I would like to give a selection of examples of female executives of Arabic history of that particular era. The first example is from Mohammed's family. Mohammed's great-grandmother, in fact, a wife of Hashim, whose name was Selma, was a lady who was trading in Medina when Hashim, who was commuting between Mecca and Gaza, encountered her in the Medina marketplace. And after he accosted her, they became married, and from this marriage then came the next generation of Mohammed's forebears. Selma so much resembles the biography of another eminent businesswoman in early Arabia, that of Khadija, that one sometimes feels her biography is a template used by historians to describe Muhammad's first wife, Khadija. Muhammad came from a family of merchant, but he did not inherit very much money, and he needed someone to invest in his caravan trade to set him up. His uncle Abu Talib introduced him to Khadija bin Huaylid, and Khadija was his first investor and later his wife. Khadija, as Tabari tells, the, the, as the historian Tabari tells his readers, was the richest lady in Mecca. One doesn't know whether she was quite the richest, but she was, in any event, a, very, a, man, a woman of means, because she made a living out of investing in caravan trade. Khadija was not the only of Muhammad's wives who had an interest in business activities. In Medina, he was married to several wives. One of these was the daughter of the second caliph, Umar. His wife, Hafsa, was appointed by Umar as Mutawali, as manager of the first waqf that Umar set up after the conquest of Khaybar. Hafsa managed what must have been very substantial estates and had to ensure that the proceeds from those estates were used in terms of, as intended under the terms of the waqf, of the public charity instituted by, by her father, Umar. But in that generation, she was not the only uh, um, female executive. Mohammed's one-time adversary and late convert, Abu Sufyan, had a wife, Hint. She divorced her husband, Abu Sufyan, and she too set up as an independent merchant. That, at least, is what we hear from the historian Tabari, who reports that the last we hear of Hint is when she is at a border haggling over tariffs with officials. Women, then, we see, were quite prolific in early Arabic business. Muhammad endorsed the presence of women in, in business. In the Medina market that he set up, there was a mutazib. A mutazib is a market regulator supervising weights and measures and making sure that business is conducted properly. And the mutazib appointed in Medina by Muhammad also was female, a tradition which did not end by, uh, under his successors because Umar also appointed women to the position of mutazib. This is only a handful of examples, but the important thing that they have in common is that they demonstrate the presence of females in executive positions in early Arab business.